Okay, we're back live here inside the Cube, and rounding out day one of exclusive coverage of IBM Information on Demand. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante. We're here with Inhi Chusa, who's the vice president. I said SVP because I, you know, I think you always get promoted. You've been on the Cube so many times. You're doing so well. It's your all your presentation fault. was so <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I was like, SVP. Come no, to the cube, okay. good things happen. Um, That's exactly well, right. At IBM, VP is a big deal, unlike some of the startups where everyone gets EVP, all these other titles. But uh, welcome back. Thank you. Thank so you. Uh, the storytelling has been phenomenal here, uh, although Merv's a little bit critical of some of the presentations early, Merv from Gardner. Um, but the story's hard. IBM, just from last year, take us through what's changed from IOD last year to this year. Uh, the story mm. has gotten tighter, um, yes, more yes. comprehensive. Give us the quick. Okay. Uh, Quick view, um, okay, here's the point of view. Here's the point of view. First, you got to invest in a platform, which we've all talked about, and I will tell you it's not just us saying it, I would say other vendors are now copying what we're saying, because if you went to Strata, we yes, there. which you were there. We were there. You probably heard some of the messages, platform right? Wars. Platform everybody wants to be a platform yeah. player. Okay, one, two, elevated risk. Uncertainty, governance. I think privacy, privacy, security risk, this is what people are talking about. They want to invest in it more. Why? Because, you know what? The decisions matter. They want to make bigger bets. They want to do more things around customer experience. They want to improve products. They want to improve pricing. Um, the third area is really a cultural statement, like applying analytics in the organization because the people and the skills. I would say the culture conversation is happening a lot more this year than it was a year ago, not just at IOD, but in the industry. So I think what you're seeing here at IOD is actually a reflection of what the conversations are happening. So are organizations culturally ready for, for this? I mean, you guys are going to say yes, and everybody comes on and says, oh yes, we're seeing it all over the place, but are they really ready? Uh, depends. I think some are. Some are absolutely ready, some are not. And probably the best examples are, um, and it really depends on the industry. So I'll give you a few examples. So in the government area, I think people see the power of applying things like real time, contextual insight, leveraging stream computing. Why? Because national security matters. A lot of fraudulent activity because that's measurable. You can drive revenue or savings. Um, healthcare. People know that a lot of decision making is being made without um, a comprehensive view of the analytics and the data. Now the other area that's interesting is, most people like to talk about text analytics, um, unstructured data, a lot of social media data, but the bulk of the data that's actually being used currently in terms of big data analytics is really transactional data. Why, because that's what's maintained in most operational systems, warehouse systems. So you're going to see a lot more data warehouse augmentation use cases, leveraging Hadoop on the front end or the back end. Um, you're going to see kind of more in terms of comprehensive view of the customer, right? Augmenting like an existing customer loyalty or segmentation data with um, additional, let's say, activity data that they're interacting with. And that was the USTA kind of demo, so showing cell, social data. Cell phone metadata, is that considered transactional? Or? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it right? well, call yeah. data record, yeah. right? CDR, right. call detail records. Well, the real time is important, too. You mentioned the U.S. Open, just for the folks out there, was a demo on stage for the U.S. Open data, yeah. looking at all the trend sentiment data, yeah, the that social cool. data, but that's people's thoughts, right? So you can see what people are doing now. That's big. Well, that you know, what's amazing about that, just one second, which is what we were doing was we were predicting it based on the past, but then we were modifying it based on real-time activity and conversation. So let's say something hot happened. And all of a sudden, uh, it, it was interesting when Brian told me this. He was like, oh yeah, Serena's average Twitter score was like 20, 200 twi uh, tweets a day. And then if some activity were to happen, let's say, I don't know, she, wrote, she had got into a romance, or let's say she decided to launch a new product, then all of a sudden you'd see a huge spike, right, in activity, social activity. That would then predict how they wanted to operate that environment. That's amazing, and you know we you know we, we love data. You've seen our our uh, crowd spots, Viewfinder. We have the new crowd chat tool, and and this idea of connecting consumers mm. is loose data. It's ephemeral data. It's transient data, but it's now capturable, so people can have a uh, have fun at the tennis tournament, and then it's over. They go back home to work. You still have that metadata. We do. That's very do. kind of it's transient and ephemeral. That's value. So, you know, Merv was saying also that your group's doing a lot of value creation. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. Business okay. outcomes. What do you, what, what's the top conversation when you walk into a, a customer that says, hey, you know, here's point A, point B, 
these my outcome. Mm -hmm. What are those conversations like? I mean, what are they? What are some of the outcomes? You just talk use case. You don't need to talk customers, but like, what are some of the examples? Yeah, you know, wh what's uh, I'll tell you one use case. So, and this was actually in the healthcare. I'll tell you one healthcare use case and one financial services use case. Both conversations happened actually in the last two weeks. So, in the um, healthcare use case. Um, there's already, let's say, a model that's happening for this particular hospital. Now, they have a workflow process. Typically, in a workflow process, you've, you're applying capabilities where you've modeled out your steps, right? You do A before B before C, and you automate this, leveraging BPM-type capabilities. In a data context, you don't actually start necessarily with knowing what the workflow is. You kind of let the da data determine what the workflow should be. So in the, this was in an ICU um, arena. Historically, if you wanted to decide who was the healthiest of the patients in the ICU because you had another trauma coming in, there was a workflow that said you had to go check the nurses, the patient's profile, and say who gets kicked out of what bed or moved because they're the most likely to be in a healthy state. That's a predefined workflow. But if you're applying streams, for example, all of a sudden you could have real-time visibility without necessarily a nurse calling a doctor who then calls the local staff who then calls the cleaning crew, right? You could actually have a dashboard that says with 80% confidence, beds two and eight, those patients, because of the following conditions, could be um, the ones that you are proactive in, in saying, oh, you know what, not only can they be released, but we have this degree of confidence around them being because released. of the day that it's coming yeah. off the instrumentation and that of changes the then potentially you know the way you're kind of setting your rules and policies around your workflow another example which was really a government use case was um, think about in government security so in security scenarios and national security scenarios you never quite know exactly what people are intending to do other than you know they're intending something bad right and they're intentionally trying not to be found so human trafficking it's an ugly topic, but I want to bring it up for a second. Here, what you're doing is you're actually looking at data compositions and, and different patterns and resolving entities. And based on that, that'll dictate kind of potentially a whole new flow or a treatment or remediation or activity or savior, which is not the predefined workflow. It's you're letting the data actually all of a sudden connect to other data points that then you're arriving at the insight to take the action. Yeah, so we're, I, I, it's I completely go, different. I want to go back to clarify different. question on the healthcare blowing. example. Yeah. So, so, so where are we today? Is that something that's actually being implemented? Is that sort of a proof of concept? Well, that's actually being done at, well, that's actually being done at uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's being done in a couple different hospitals, one of which is actually in a um, uh, hospital in Canada. And then we're also leveraging streams in the Emory University um, intensive we care had, unit. Uh, Timothy Buckman on. You uh, did earlier. earlier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of the He's IC brilliant. ICU of the future, right? The, oh, my you know, gosh. Absolutely that, brilliant. That trafficking example brings up, you know, obviously that's a, the underbelly of the world and society, but like data can actually, Jeff Jonas has been on the queue, as you know, many times, and he talks about his puzzle pieces. In a way, that the data is traveling on a network, a network <laughs> that's distributed, and essentially that's network computing. I mean, essentially network it management. Is. So it if is. you look at network it management, is. you can look at patterns, right? So, so that's, uh, an interesting example. So uh, that begs the next question. What is the craziest, most interesting use case you've seen? Oh my gosh. Okay. Now I gotta think about it. Oh, yes. That All you right. can talk about. That I can talk <laughs> about. That but creates that's... business value or society value. Oh, you know, or, or... I, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> boy, you are putting me on the spot. The craziest one. So three weeks. It could be it could be G rated. Okay, you don't have to go too too crazy. No, you know what? I PG participated 13. three weeks ago. TIAA CREF actually hosted a fraud summit where it was all um, investigators, like they were doing crime investigation. So more than 60% of the guys in the room um, carried weapons because <laughs> they were security intelligence, they were police, they were DAs, they, were you, you packing? know, did, uh, I was not packing. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, anyway. And there was about, uh, so 60 plus percent were those, right? And then only about 30% in the room were um, what I would consider the data scientists in the room. Yeah. Like these are the guys that are trying to decide which claims are not true or false, right. so forth. There were at least like three or four use cases in that discussion that came out. They were unbelievable. So one is in the fraud area in particular and in crime, they're layering the data. They're, what does layering the data? They're taking location-based data, um, for geographic region. They're putting crime data on top of that, right? Historical, like, 
drug rings, and even like data sets in Miami-Dade County, the DA told me they were doing things where um, rather than looking at people that are dr dealing the drugs, they, they realize people that had possession of a drug typically purchased within a certain location and they had these abandoned properties and were able to identify entire rings based on that. Another one, this is also semi-drug related, is um, in the energy utility space, there was in the middle part of the United States, uh, uh, houses in nice urban areas where they were completely torn apart on the interior and built into marijuana houses. And so, of course, they're utilizing high levels of gas and, and electricity in order to maintain the water fertilization and everything else. Well, what happens is it drives peaks in the way that the energy utility looks on a given day pattern. So based on that, they're able to detect how um, inappropriate activities are happening and whether it's a single opportunistic type activity, whether it's a it's whether group it was crime mom activity. doing the laundry or, <laughs> or, drug, or drug irrigating the, the, irrigating the wheat. The, uh, well, you know, what's interesting about electricity, too, is especially if someone's using electricity, but no one's, like, using any of the gas, you're like, oh, someone's home, but no one's cooking? You know, something's yeah. a little off. But it, it was fascinating. I mean, really fascinating. There were, like, several other crime uh, scenarios in terms of speed. I actually did not know the U.S. Postal Service is like the longest running federal um, uh, uh, institution that actually tracked like mail fraud. And one of the use cases uh, I'm sure Jeff has talked about here on um, the Cube is probably a MoneyGram use case. But we talked about that. We talked. I mean, it, it, the stories were unreal because I was spending time with forensic scientists as well as forensic investigators, and okay. that's a completely different So we're getting, we're getting the, okay, we've got a few minutes <laughs> left. That's the need for a platform to handle all this diversity, right? So, so <laughs> Hence the security risk, yeah. the governance, you, everything you else. you got to go because you're a star for the analyst meeting, but i got to ask you I one final question. I can't believe we're having this conversation. One final question. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best yet. This is the best. we got drugs in there. we got other things, packing uh, guns, uh, guns and drugs. You human know. trafficking, um, you know. Tobacco. Like we health care, ICU. Alcohol, tobacco. Marijuana. Um, <laughs> while we're on oh that, let's talk about the knowledge worker. All right. <laughs> um, final question before I know you got to go. Um, this big data applications where, you know, the, the guys in the mailroom, the guys who work for the post office, are now enabled to actually do this kind of high level, kind of da basically data science, yeah. um, if you will, or being an analyst. So that w I want you to share with the folks your vision of the definition of the knowledge worker. Overused word that's been kicked around from the PC generation, but now with handheld, with analytics, yeah. with real time, with streaming, all this stuff happening at the edge, how is in, that going to change the, the knowledge worker, the person in the trenches? It could be the person in the cubicle, the person on the go, the mobile salesperson, or anyone. You know, I, some people feel threatened when they hear that you're going to apply data and analytics everywhere because you're, it, it implies that you're automating things, but that's actually not the value. The real value is the insight so that you can double down on the decisions you want to make. So if you're more confident, you're going to take bigger bets, right? And decision making historically has been, I, I think, um, uh, reserved for a very elite few. And what we're talking about now is a democratization of, of that insight and with that comes a lot of empowerment a lot empowerment for everyone and you don't have to be a data scientist be able to be able to make decisions and inform decisions if anything you know uh, actually tim buckman and i had a good conversation about them as a professional you know what i if i was a physician i'd want to work at the hospital that has the advanced capabilities why because it allows me as a professional physician to then be able to do what i was trained to do not to detect and have to pay attention to all these alarms right. going off. You know, I want to work at the institutions and organizations that are investing appropriately because it pushes the caliber of the work I get to do. So I think it just yeah. changes the dynamics for everyone. Yeah, people, Tim was everyone. like a high-priced logistics manager. People want to work with people want to work with leaders, and, and now we're in a modern era, and this new wave is upon us. People and, care, uh, and they want to improve, and this is about uh, continuing to improve. Dave and I always talk about the open source world. That those that those principles are going mainstream to every aspect of business, mm -hmm. collaboration, openness, transparency, not controlled. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. And he thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. I know you're busy. Thank you for your time. We are here live in the Cube getting all the signal from the noise and some uh, good commentary at the end of day one. Uh, we have uh, one more guest, Ray Wang, right up next. Stay tuned, we'll be right back.
huge